Gee, looks like I'm back in the movies again, doesn't it? Well, as a matter of fact, I like to do some talking. Now, it isn't as if it was a chore for me to talk to you because I want to speak on my favorite subject. Welcome to my model corner. For Project 30, we will build and detail a replica of one of the most cutting edge aircraft of its time, the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. Previous model kits issued of this incredible jet were smaller and had been harder to come by until the relatively recent release of this larger 148 scale version by Ravel. This is not a trick shot made with mirrors. It is the drafting room of the engineering department where every new Lockheed has its beginning. The component parts of a modern airplane's wing, fuselage, and tail surface are almost countless in number. Yet every single one of them must be engineered. Even the most minute part receives the greatest attention. Let's begin by freeing up our large fuselage halves by cutting a little further away from the parts than usual to reduce the risk of damage at the sprue connection points and just take on a little more sanding to get the edges flush as needed. Cleanly, expertly severed. The work of a skilled surgeon. I usually don't wash my model parts prior to setting out to work on them, however in some areas there is a noticeable dirty lubricant from the manufacturing process that we'll certainly have to address with some soap and water this time around. If you already plan to attach your Blackbird to the showcase stand, you'll need to drill out these holes prior to closing up the fuselage. Included in the kit are some nice bracing pieces for the internal structure which also gives it extra strength and rigidity. The kit started out with great fitting internal parts, but things will change later on with the main body. There is great detail on many of the parts and this is especially notable on the molded engine sectional pieces. Care has been taken in establishing fine and precise piping, conduits, and other features as these two engines are no doubt key to the overall final presentation on the display stand. If my assumptions are correct, this little scheme has behind it the most brilliant and ruthless intellect the world has ever known.
The plan is to pose this model as streamlined as possible in recognition that this aircraft can attain incredible speeds. Nonetheless, we'll include as much detail work of the landing gear, cockpits, and air refuel bay prior to storing them within the interior of this Blackbird. Oh, but you must be out of your mind. Why? We're just quirky that way. Our efforts will begin by preparing and painting everything necessary in order to mate the fuselage halves together, such as the cockpits, before concentrating on other tasks. We have part E62 which is correct for placement as instructed, however the illustration is of part E63. We can begin with installing the pieces of the gear bay separately rather than partially constructing them prior. We'll allow the gear to swing for now until we get to the point where we'll have to make adjustments such as cutting away pieces or sanding them down to fit inside since they weren't meant to be retracted. We'll mask off our avionics panels prior to adding the cockpit gray. In case you're wondering, the kit does not come with crew figures. Rather than quickly applying the supply decals, we can just go with painting and scraping away at the appropriate areas at the instrumentation panels. There are model company giants in the industry, but in the last couple of years I've seen the lesser known plastic kit manufacturers really begin to step up to the plate with better quality kits, include extras, and even take chances on some unusual subjects. To think what models were like when I was 7 or 8 years old just starting out compared to what I can pick up these days is quite astonishing. The growth, improvements in manufacturing and innovation have made these recent years the best to be a plastic hit hobbyist. In the rush to complete the cruise sections, adding the ejection seat handles was neglected. We'll paint them and carefully insert them onto the seats. How very quaint of you. Now here's another thing. Now this is kind of hard to explain, but believe you me, it's important. You see, while you're getting all this wonderful technical training, you're learning about other things too. Things that are going to pay off in big dividends. You're learning to be alert. Yeah, you're learning about courage, too. But you'll know what I mean, and I hope soon.
So once we begin installing the fuselage heads, we quickly learn that although tabs, slots, pegs, and holes align well, overall, parts are not flush in places. It's as if two different production runs were molding slightly different versions of this model, and the parts bags got mixed up between the factory lines, or... It's something infinitely more sinister. For a strong bond, we can elect to use extra thin CA glue dipped onto a metal applicator wand and avoid using a messier thick cement. Many video clips of the SR-71 present the nose wheel hub as a silver aluminum color, but the one I saw close up had a green coloring. Only a few accommodations were needed to fit the main gear in the bays, but disappointingly, the circular wheel well did not provide enough clearance for all three tires. Half the tire of the outboard wheel you see here had to be removed so that the gear door could be positioned level with the bottom fuselage. Just a little sanding to even out the edges, but the expansion gap is slightly too wide and cavernous. Putty is spread within to make this feature less prominent. We have two aft engine portions to put in the fuselage and two full engine core versions for the display mount. To distinguish them in this video, we'll dub them the internal and the external engines, respectively. Please note that. It's easy to notice at this point that there are some instruction errors. Parts C127 and C129 are paired together as is C126 and C128, which would put opposing halves together. Although these ejection pin marks probably won't be visible, we'll scrape them away.
To make the small space near the spike more visible with a little reflectivity, plain black paint wasn't used. Although this looks pretty ugly, these seam lines won't be observable and don't require attention. Again, the specter of mismatching production lines appeared. The right nacelle fit well, but the left side needed extra considerations to make it acceptable. As with the fuselage, the underside expansion gaps of the engine cowlings needed putty work. We can clean up the putty using cotton swabs and paper towels dipped in water. The Wings of America, the United States Air Force. Challenge, pride, experience. Find out how you can be part of it. Aim high. Air Force. Nothing will stop the US Air Force. The right side tertiary doors piece had these depressions that needed filling, but not on the left side. Don't forget there are souvenir Max Afterburner channel glasses and also mugs with different backgrounds available. A link is in the video description below. If you are seeking custom graphics artwork, drop a line to Phil. He's a great guy and his contact information is also listed in the description below. You're part of a team. Now remember that. We can airbrush these parts much like we did for the aft engine segment seen earlier. A dry check demonstrates a reasonable seam line up top, but a rather large gap on the underside. As we did with the main fuselage, we can use some thin super glue and then more putty work. The putty work at the top was much easier to deal with. The underside, however, was much more difficult and tedious, and I often delayed working on it for days at a time, just to avoid it. Setting the main fuselage aside for a moment, let's tend to the flight control surfaces. Although I would call these vertical tails normally, these are often referred to as rudders for the SR-71.
In this case, we'll start with straight black instead of NATO black. Although nicely molded, these engine sections pose challenges of removing seam lines in tight, detailed areas without causing damage. Many SR-71 engines accompany retired blackbirds in museums with slight variations in their appearance. You may wish to exactly duplicate or mix and match as alternative approaches. We'll build layer upon layer developing the general look of the exterior core. Although we saddled ourselves with a bunch of extra steps, hopefully in the end we'll come up with some decent looking engines. Here we can repeat the same steps for the external engines as we performed on the internal engine sections. Using three different AK True Metal colors, we'll replicate the tarnishing effects of heat in this region. Painting in our piping ranges from relatively easy to plumbing with very low relief requiring a dry brushing technique to fill them in. It's easy to make errors needing touch-ups in surrounding areas. Adding our black oil wash allows for darkening the colors, adding grime, and creating shadows that highlight and refine the in-depth molding. We add a little dark oil wash to make those fan blades distinctive and then we dry brush on some aluminum to make the edges highlighted. A little dusting here and there with some white weathering powder. Some joint lines on the engines are still noticeable, which we'll need tending to shortly. 
Let's take a break from all that detail work and get our museum stand ready. There are two nose options to choose from depending on which tail number you've selected. Tail 17958 only has one selection though. Despite making corrections, the nose cone has a considerable gap on the top side of the fuselage as compared to the bottom. More putty. To capture the red frame outline of the windows, we can mask off the inside of the cockpit glass pieces. The SR-71 has appeared as a deep space black all the way to the color that is truly NATO black, so you have many variations to pick from. After the first coat was added, it seemed as if we didn't have to continue. However, we want to enhance the variation in tonal qualities, so we airbrush in our random spaghetti patterns. I can't think of a pleasanter experience. Next, we add a second coat of black.
You can add the underside white cross depending on which tail number and time period you're aiming for in your SR-71. Unfortunately, once the protective coat was applied, there was a problem. What is it? What happened? I don't know. You'll have to help me. You've got to help me. But I don't understand. Much of the variation seen in the initial paint job virtually vanished. In retrospect, perhaps an exaggerated version of the airbrush work needed to be applied to preserve more of those contrasting effects. The decals for this kit are strong and well printed as most circumferential carrier film outlines are non-existent, saving us from a lot of work trimming. However, they don't stick well to the surface of the model even after air and excess moisture are removed. Only when the decal solvent is applied do they remain in place. There are many scary sections of walkway lines to add to the fuselage but they did not break or become tangled, so it was a relief when they went on well and fit correctly. Now, uh, uh, what you're going to see next isn't considered exactly a part of the regular training course. Using a lighter fluid and white oil paint wash, we begin to accentuate the detail, create uneven fading, lighten and weather the exterior body. It can be likened to an aircraft in a grass field with a sprinkler system dousing the aircraft in hard water to imagine how to add the oil paint. Down the curvatures and chines, circular motions on the top of the humps, and pooling at the lowest spots. We can modulate and blend using different amounts of paint and also through the uneven removal in other areas with cotton swabs and towels. Expect that the dull coat to be applied later will begin to redarken all the paintwork.
We have fixed three lower antennas and all that's left to add is the pedostatic tube to complete this blackbird. Must you drag this on? This is the moment I've been anticipating for a long time, my dear. Adding of the engine cores to the display was easy once they're lined up with the mounts. Let's roll out 180 degrees. The model is well balanced and fits nicely to the mount and no glue is needed if you desire it to be removable. Take care and we'll see you later.